on everyone what's up Andrew E guy here work life enrichment coaching consultant reminding you that I am building resilient learners and leaders for life Wow hey man listen I just finished my evening run every time I get home or every time I get off the road from a speaking engagement I try to add something to it man. I try to add some some resilience training to it so I want to encourage you doesn't matter what you're doing where you are right now make sure you're putting resilience first I always tell people I say you know what resiliency is not even about it's not even about bouncing back because bouncing back from what right resiliency is about staying the course um, I heard an old scripture, and I say old because it's been around for many years. He said, you will reap if you faint not. Everything that I do now, when I teach on resiliency, when people call me to speak on either work-life enrichment or when, where you are, my new book that's coming up, it's all about resiliency. I really think there is nothing else in life that is going to help you to get from point A to B without having resiliency. And many people will say it's faith, but I want to let you know that if you don't have resiliency, you don't have faith, right? Because the good book said that you will reap if you faint not. Reap means you have a harvest if you don't quit. So the ability to stay the course is resilience. The ability to not give up is what I'm talking about. So when I go, I remember as a matter of fact, I was in in uh, Orlando, Florida, giving a talk at a change management conference. Thousands of people from everywhere, right? And they come there, you know, they get their little pad out and they have this pad and they're ready, man. And they're there, they're waiting for the next best nugget. And a whole bunch of speakers went up and gave a fancy conversation, a fancy talk. You know, the little, you know, soundbite talks. You know, that's what I'm talking about. And they're giving their little talks, man. And I noticed something strange happen in the audience. You know what the strange thing was? People sat there on the edge of their seat. They were waiting, absolutely waiting for the nugget. They were waiting for the thing that they can take with them. They were waiting for the takeaway that they can use to transform their life. And they'll jot down one or two things and then they slump back down in their seat. I was in the back of the audience, just observing, checking out the speaker, giving him some props and stuff. But when I looked at how the audience just slumped down, their shoulders slumped, and I told them, I said, listen, everybody stand up. I said, first of all, I want you to clear your mind. Now I'm getting to it. I'm getting to these five tips to help you build a resilient summer. I'm going to, but I got to tell you the story first. I told everybody, I said, listen, I want you to stand on your feet and I want you to take five deep breaths. By the way, if you know me by now, uh, most of the things that I talk about is five this, five this, five that, five that. The reason why, because we have five fingers, do we? No, we have five phalanges, four fingers and one thumb. And the purpose of this is for you to fold a fist, make a fist and then pack a punch and impact your life, your home life, your community, your region, your nation, your country and oh my goodness the globe that's what i'm talking about so when i talk about five things i told them to take five deep breaths in because it seemed as if they were waiting to exhale like my great i would say one of my favorite singer of all time whitney houston waiting to exhale many people are living their life waiting to exhale and never take the breath that will save their life you need to breathe you need to make sure you're doing mindful things to breathe big up i want to say a big shout out to um charles capty how you doing hope everything is going well thank you for stopping by hey hey young man what's the deal uh charles capty is one of my students and we always talking about resiliency probably one of the best runners i've ever seen you know that came across my path personally so much shout out to uh, um, Charles Capti and all the rest of the boys on um, the RLA uh, um, boys keep your head up and keep doing what you do but so we're talking about resiliency right and when I got up and I told the audience I said listen I need you to take five deep breaths when these people took the five deep breaths they realized oh my goodness they said wow they were shocked they were shocked that 
the breath that they took was a free breath, but it seemed like the most expensive thing that they can ever have. What I'm trying to say to you right now is to make sure that I'm going to give you these five tips that you can use to build a resilient summer and a resilient life. Not just for the summer. I want you to have this for life. I want to give a big shout out to all of my students, uh, all of my uh, um clients that are out there you know who you are um big up to um charles captain who's going off to brock university um next year man make sure you hang in there and i hope you go up for the track team man because you got skills all right so let me get back so the first thing you want to do to build a resilient life for to impact your summer is to breathe you need to oxygenate your brain a lot of people are oxygenated deprived they're oxygen deprived because they do not breathe Okay, they don't breathe. So what you need, you need to do. I'm saying big up to my, my my neighbor over there. I'm doing a live right now. So you want to make sure you're breathing. When you're breathing, basically have oxygen turn over so you can oxygenate your brain. Let's say for example, if you're working, if you're working every day, if you're running or moving, the muscles and the tissues that are actually doing the movement need one thing. They need oxygen, but you have to take that oxygen so it binds to the blood and the heart will pump it to the tissues and bring the nutrients there. That's what you need to be doing. Got to make sure your breathing take time out just to have a quiet breathing time. And you can count it out. You can count it out on your fingers. Two, three, four, five in and then two, three, four, five out. Breathing is another way to reset your nervous system. That's number one. You got to breathe if you're not breathing man listen you're not even alive you're just existing right so that's number one number two you need to reflect you cannot just go through your day and just do everything and then go back home and then sit on the couch and get fat you got to make sure you're putting that moment of reflection what is reflection reflection means to take a look back at the things that happened during the day here is one thing that people take for granted driving to work many people drive to work and they take it for granted that they leave point a and they reach to work and they reach there safely you need to make sure this is number three now. You got to make sure you express gratitude. So when you drive, if you get from point A to B and you get there alive, you got to make sure that you're showing some level of gratitude. Say, man, I didn't have to get here. So many people started a journey and guess what's happening? Die, get into a car accident and never make it to work. So when you leave A and you go to your work, you want to make sure you're given gratitude for the ability for you to get to point A to B. The next thing, I want you to follow me over here. Okay. You need to take some moment to smell the roses. You see that? These are the plants that are inside, right outside the back of my house. See that right there? All of these plants outside my house. Let me flip the camera around so you can see it. Okay. You see those? Beautiful. I love to garden. So every now and again, I'm doing some gardening. I'm planting these flowers outside the house here. And these, this is therapeutic. See? All of these right here. See that? And then over here, some more. Plants. Love flowers. Love flowers. Love them. Love them. Look at that. Beautiful. I love these things right here. Love them. What am I saying to you? You need to take a moment just to smell the roses. Take a moment to smell the roses. What am I saying to you? Take a moment to enjoy the moment. Take a moment to enjoy the moment. Don't just live your life haphazardly, like I'm going from one thing to the next, next thing to the next. No appreciation for what's happening. You need to stop and smell the roses. What do I mean by stop and smell the roses? Here's the next one. This is number four. When you get from point A to B, the number one thing or the first thing you should do is, yes, we're going to be grateful. But there's one thing that you're forgetting to do. Get on your phone, text and or call your partner, your wife or your husband. If your children are available, they might be in school. But text somebody to say that touchdown. In my family, it doesn't matter where we are going, when we land or where we reach where we're going, we always send a text to say touchdown. What are we doing that for? The reason why we're doing that is to let the other persons know who are praying for our safety arrival or safe arrival that guess what? I got there and it wasn't an accident. I am so grateful that this was a miracle and I got there and I am safe and I want to let you know thank you for praying for me. 
Now, a lot of people going to say, well, Andrew, come on now. Easy with this religious stuff. Let me tell you something first of all. I am not the religious guy. If you need religion, then you go find a preacher somewhere. I am not that guy. Okay? I'm not that guy, pal. I am not here to preach to you. What I'm here to help you to understand is that there is a creator that created me and he created you. And you know this is true because guess what? Hmm, we got a nose and we got two nostrils. We got two eyes. We got a mouth. We got two ears. Hmm. We got four fingers, one thumb. Hmm. We got two feet, two arms, two shoulders. We, we, we got a, a sternum. Hmm. We got this crazy muscle that come down here. They're called the platysma. This is what this muscle is called. Platysma. That's the piss off muscle right there. That's what it's called. It makes you look like that. That's the piss off muscle right there. <laughs> that's it. When you get upset, that's the muscle right there. I look ridiculous. Let me stop that. That muscle is called platysma, right? My background is anatomy and physiology. That's a little bit of anatomy lesson for you. Where am I going with this? When we look at everything in the human body, there is like a carbon copy. There is a statement that says, hmm, must be made by the same creator. I may have a different paint job on my, on my skin. Think of myself as a car. Hey, my brain is my hemi. That's my thinking power. But my skin, my car, my paint job, hmm, little nice chocolate brown. And what am I trying to say to you? It doesn't matter what the car paint job looks like. It's what's inside that counts. A lot of time we get stuck on the paint job and we never get a chance to get to know what's underneath the hood. So number five, number five, here is number five and I'm gonna put in two more bonus. Number five is what you need to do as self-assessment. A lot of times we cry and we blame other people or we play the race card because we really don't know who we are. We don't have the right identity. We don't know who we are. And so because we don't know who we are, then we forget what our purpose in life is. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me. We all look alike because we're made by the same creator. We've already established that. Right. But the thing is that we don't take the time out to get to know who we are. We don't get the time, a chance to think about our skills, our talent, our expertise, our area of talentedness. We don't. We don't do an assessment of what we have. And for this number five, what I'm calling is the Moses effect. I see you saying, Andrew, what the heck is the Moses effect? The Moses effect is simply this. Here's what it is. You remember when the children of Israel are trying to cross the Red Sea? Okay, well, it's an old Bible story. It's old, but it's still relevant to today. The Red Sea represents um, all the challenges that you go through. But it's the culminating challenge. It's the culminating challenge that you have to go through that makes the difference, right? This is the one that, oh my gosh, you ran away from Pharaoh. That's all the other struggles that you've gone through in the past. And now, bam, I'm at the Red Sea. Nothing I can do about it. I can't do anything about it. There's a sea. I can't cross it. I need what's called a miracle. I'm not talking about a miracle. I'm talking about a miracle. A miracle is something personal to you. Okay? The religious people call it a miracle. I call it a miracle. And so here you are. You're right there at the Red Sea. The Red Sea is the thing that held you back. The Red Sea is the hindrance that prevent you from stepping out and not follow your dreams. Many people are saying follow your dreams. No, you want to live the dream. You are the one that's leading the dream. You are the one that have the dream. I want you to stop having dreams and start living the dream. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day. Listen, no, it's no one day. It's which one day? Which one day? You need to say to yourself, this one day. This one day, I will stop having dreams. I will start living my dream. What is your dream? Just step out and do the thing. Many of you are wearing Nike. I wear um, Saucony. That's my thing right there. All right. That's my shoes right there. That's what I like. Not a Nike fan. I don't know why. I'm just uh, Saucony. Um, that's, my, that's my brand right there. That's what I like. But what I've noticed that we, we're not, we, we, we're, we're following our dreams. And then we follow this thing. It's almost like finding Pokemon and you can't find it. You end up somewhere that you don't know where you're supposed to be. 
you need to live the dream. Live in the dream by activating the skill, the talent, expertise that you have in you and use those to bless others. Use those to help other people. That's living the dream because when you know you're living your dream, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to help somebody else's dream come true. Man, I'm getting too upset right now, but I need to calm down. I'm sorry. I need to really calm down right now because listen what's going on. We need to make sure that we are living our dream there's some things that i've gotten to do if i was just following my dreams i wouldn't have made it i wouldn't have made it and, and i'm going to give you um self-disclosure right now like when i tell people they say andrew why are you also pump why are you so pump why, why is your main thing resiliency because i said other than resiliency if you don't have resiliency you have nothing if you're not willing to hang in there you won't stay in there and if you're not willing to stay in there you won't get there and i always tell people to 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 got there before you get there i said got there before you get there andrew what the heck are you talking about got there before you get there that means you have to see the thing you have to get there in your mind got there before you get there because when you do get there everything changed then i always say as a matter of fact I really want you to go and pick up a copy of my book. The book is called Work Your Words. Go to andrewguyspeaks.com, andrewguyspeaks.com. Click on the link. Go get your copy of this book called Work Your Words. Here is the main thing that I want you to get from that book. You need to dream big. I've been saying it for years, and then I see everybody's talking about dream big now. When I say dream big, many people are just saying that word as a cliche, and they don't understand what it means. When I say dream big, when I say think big, I want you to think bigger than your brain. No, people, Andrew, they say, Andrew, what are you talking about, man? My background is in anatomy and physiology science teacher, right? So I want you to help you to understand something. When I say dream big, you don't dream in your head, you know. You literally dream in your mind. And let me explain something. The brain is only three and a half pounds of matter that's inside your cranium, all right? It's three and a half pounds. If you're only going to dream to your capacity, you're limiting yourself to what you can accomplish in life. You need to dream bigger than your brain, bigger than your skull can hold. Let me tell you something. The brain is three and a half pounds. It's only three and a half pound matter that's inside your cranium. But the mind is infinitely big. It's infinitely flexible. I can be here right now sitting on my front step and I can mentally go to Jamaica. I can mentally go to Africa. I can mentally go right back to the United States of America and Florida and go back to my old home that I used to live at in Florida. Mentally. But I'm, my brain is here. What am I trying to get you to understand? You need to dream bigger than your brain can hold. Here is the quote that I want you to get from the book, Work Your Words. If the dream of the dreamer ever come to fruition, the life of the dreamer change instantaneously. Let me say it again. If the dream of the dreamer ever come true, the life of the dreamer changes instantaneously for the rest of their life. What am I saying to you? You want a dream so big that if that dream ever come true, oh my God, oh my OMG, like, bam, my life has changed. And so I want to make it more practical for you that if you're dreaming, most people say, hey, dream for the sky. You're missing it. There is no sky. Listen to me, people. There is absolutely no sky. If you've ever been in an airplane lately, you notice that the plane takes off on the runway, it goes on the tarmac, and then it takes off on the runway, and it keeps going up and up and up and up. If the sky was the limit, you fools, listen to me. If the sky was the limit, the plane would hit the sky and fall back down. The same thing with your life. You're allowing people to put a cap on you. And tell you this is all you can do, this is how far you can go, this is how wide you can live, this is how deep you can go. You need to stop that. The sky is not the limit. You get in the airplane and the airplane is going to keep going up and up and up and up. It's going to go through the clouds. And then when it levels off, you realize, oh my gosh. There's one day, quick story, I was going to, to Jamaica. And it was minus 41. In Toronto Canada hear me minus 41 okay 
we got on the plane and the plane kept going up and up and up and up did you know that when the plane get to the altitude that it's going to level off the sun was shining there was no more clouds we were riding on top of the clouds when i look down i can look at the cloud as if it was a blanket and i'm i'm we're flying between another heaven and something that looks like a carpet so if the sky was your limit once we hit that cloud we would have fall back down and i'm telling you people dream past the stars why that means if you're if you fall if you dream and you fail or you fell and you fall you will still be in the air did you hear what i'm saying i'm gonna say it again you need to dream past the stars if you're just dreaming for the sky you're too short as my people in the south would say you come up shout shout you need to dream past the stars that means if the dream ever come through you are among the moon the stars because you know the moon is a star the moon is a rock the sun is a star you want to make sure you don't dream no little dream there is no room for little bitty dream as my jamaican people say there's no room for little dream you know no room for little dream brethren you have to step up and do this thing big the reason why people are not motivated to live their dream here's the answer they're only dreaming for themselves you're selfish you're only dreaming for yourself you need to dream so big you're dreaming for your children's 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 children you need to dream the generational dream that means if you didn't make it but you started the process your children can pick it up and then if they didn't make it then their children can pick up the process from where they left off it's the same thing when we look at the children of israel moving through the wilderness a whole bunch of them died off in the 40 years and then another generation came and then joshua took those ones to the promised land you hear what i'm saying the promised land did you hear me the promised land so i'm trying to get you to understand as this camera is moving in and out you got a dream so big make sure your dream is bigger than you because if you're just dreaming for you your goal is gonna come up shout a small dream is a selfish dream and you're absolutely right it's selfish because it's only for you you need to dream the generational dream and number five to building a resilient summer is to make sure your dream is bigger than your brain and it's bigger than your circumstance when you're thinking like that it doesn't matter if you're in the prison like Joseph it doesn't matter where you are you know that one day the palace is coming you know that weeping may endure for one night but the joy is coming in the morning the weeping is the tough times it's the challenges that you're gonna go through most people don't want to go through the challenges so you cannot become as a matter of fact I'm releasing another book that's coming out in the next couple of months it's called win where you are win where you are stop waiting to become a lot of people don't make it to the next phase because they haven't mastered where they are they have not mastered where they are you want to win where you are now so you can get to the next step now I'm gonna put it all together so you can understand we started talking about the Red Sea we said the Red Sea are the things that you're going through the trials tribulation the struggles the hardships that you're going through we're saying those are the struggles but you're gonna come to one a culmination of all of those struggles that you're going through. you're gonna come to a Red Sea this is the one that knock you down this is the one that put you flat on your back this is the one that come to consume you this is the one they say man, man I don't get through this man I just don't be like that's the one right there that's your Red Sea everybody on earth have a Red Sea the Red Sea is that challenge that shake you to your core. 
That's what it is. That's your Red Sea. And so I'm asking you, what's in your hand, Moses? You remember I said to you, number four of the resiliency summer pack, is that people are not taking an assessment of themselves. They're not taking an assessment of themselves. They don't know what they're good at. They don't know what they're great at. They don't know what they're okay at. They don't know what they suck at so they can get better at it. They don't know if you know what they need to work at. You need to do an assessment of yourself. So I'm going to ask you this one question. What's in your hand, Moses? I said, what's in your hand, Moses? Because the thing that's in your hands is the thing that comes naturally to you. It's the thing that when you do it, man, nobody else on earth can do what you do like you do when you're doing it. That's the question. That's the answer. That's the solution. Have you ever asked yourself, what's in my hand, Moses? I say Moses because you are a type of Moses. Because you are carrying your family. You're carrying a set of dreams that's all inside of you. And you got to give birth to this brainchild. You can't just sit there thinking about it. You have to give birth to it. That's why you have to get these five resilient tips that's going to help you to have a resilient summer because that's what it's all about it doesn't matter how much money you have you don't matter how big your house is it doesn't matter how smooth or fast your car is if you're not resilient you're not gonna last period when I coach people you know people tell you that oh your yeah, Andrew is a nice guy but man if he's gonna coach you uh, you you learn to hate him before you learn to love him Here's what, here's what I want to get you to understand. I'm going to come back to the point about Moses and what's in your hand. Because that's how we're going to wrap up today. When I, and people ask me, say, Andrew, what's your coaching method? I said, I'm a sharpener, period. I said, I'm a sharpener, but I am also utensils. I am a sharpener first, but I'm also three type of utensils. I'm going to tell you why. It's in the book that's coming out, Win Where You Are. Go to winwhereyouare.com winwhereyouare.com w-i-n-w-h-e-r-e-y-o-u-a-r-e.com winwhereyouare.com and pick up a copy of the book so when people ask me by the way pre-order book is coming soon get in on it because we're going to launch a course and man you want to make sure you get in on there quick all right so when i said to the people they asked me so Andrew what's your coaching method I said man I'm I am I'm simply that I'm just a, a sharpener that's it everybody has a pencil and inside their pencil is a lead the lead is the thing the expert the skills the talents expertise that they need to use to transform the world but they can't see it because it's inside the pencil the pencil is the wood you are the wood the wood represents you the body right inside you are your gifts skills expertise and talents right they're inside you they represent your lead but the thing is i tell people that i am their sharpener because if you don't go through the sharpener of life you will never have a point to make and so i want to get you to go through the sharpener so you can have a point to make and you can expose your lead so you can write a vision for yourself if this is making sense to you, if this is knocking on wood, if this is uh, resonating with you, you need to put some comp in, comments inside here. Let me know if this is working for you. If you need help with coaching, I'm not talking about your typical, oh, yeah, I'll coach you one day a week. I'm going to kick your butt and I'm going to get you up from where you are to where you need to be so you can be doing what you need to be doing. That's the kind of coach I am. I am a coach, but I have to first coach myself. And I'm not going to tell you to do something that I'm not doing. I just came back from my run, sweating like a pig. I'll post my thing inside here in a second. Uh, how do I do that? How do I post something in here? Uh, I can post something. How do I do that? No request. Okay, fine. There's got to be something that I can... Uh, how do I post? Oh, here it is. Uh, wait, hang in there. Hang in there. I'm trying to post something in here. How do I post a picture? Nope, can't do it. Don't know how to do it. Okay, so I need to get better at that. I post a picture. I was trying to post a picture in here. I had something that I took earlier on. And I wanted to post it in here. But I don't see it. Uh, nope. Don't see it. I don't know if I can post a picture while I'm doing this. Anyways, we'll get back to that another time. Alright, I'll post it after. Alright. So, 
I said my goal is to be the sharpener, right? And the sharpener is going to help you to trim off those things that are holding you back. Almost like lay aside every weight. Every weight that so easily beset you, that keep you back from going where you need to go. And that's me as the sharpener. The next side of me is I am a knife, I'm a fork, and a spoon. The knife is taking your big problems and break up those big problems and cutting them down into manageable size. And once you cut down those big problems into manageable size, then guess what? You're able to now handle them, deal with them. Take them in bite size and break them down so you can have little wins. And in all those little wins, make up the big winner you in life. The next part of that is after the knife, I am the motivator. I am going to push the heck out of you. I will take no rubbish. When I say it's time to go, it's go time. You tell me what your goal is. You tell me what your dream is. And my job is to make sure you get it done. I'm not talking about no doing. I'm talking about get it done. You go check. Check, check, check my track record. Some of my clients are doing some amazing things right now. Because listen, I push them. I said, this is what you got to do. I'm holding you to it. This is what we got to do. You got to get it done. And so that's the fork. I'm going to poke you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to prod you. And when you get so exhausted that you can't go any further, I'm the spoon, the merciful spoon. I'm going to scoop you up. And I'm going to say, dust yourself off. Quit all that hollering. Quit all that crying. It's time to do the process all over again. Why are you crying? What's the problem? This is too big for me. I can't. Good. Let's get the knife and let's cut this dream up into some smaller manageable pieces so you can swallow this big elephant one piece at a time. And that's exactly how it happens. So what am I getting on this thing here to talk to you about? You could be doing so many things. But I'm outside here. It's getting dark. After a while, you may not be able to see me. Right? But here's what's happening. A lot of times we fail to win because we don't have these five things in our pocket called resiliency tips. And so number four, I'm going to give you the secret to number four right now. You need to take the assessment of yourself by asking yourself the question, what's in your hand, Moses? What's in your hand is the thing that you're great at, you're good at. Nobody else can do it like you. That's you. That's what you do. Nobody can do it like you. That's what your what's in your hand, Moses, answer to that question is. Everyone is good at something, but some people are great at something. There's one thing that you're amazing at. That's your rod. I want you to take that rod and stretch it out across the Red Sea, and it's going to open up the Red Sea. You're going to believe in the creator that created you, that gave you that skill and that gift. Are you going to take it? Are you going to open up that Red Sea? Are you going to press right through until you get there? Yes, it's dark. We started talking a long time until it got real dark out here. And I'm okay with that. If you can hear my voice, because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. So if you can hear my voice, you can hear me. And that's all that matters. So here's what we talked about today. The five tips that you need to build your resilient summer and that's exactly what we're talking about the number one thing that you need to do is to breathe the next thing you need to do is to make sure you're showing gratitude you need to make sure you're showing appreciation for the moments that's number three when you get from point a to b you need to send a text to the loved ones and the people that love you and care about you and are praying for you and say touchdown i got there number four you need to take an assessment of the skill sets that you have in your life and you need to ask yourself the number one question that's going to reveal this is a diagnostic question and it's called what's in your hand what's in your hand I'm trying to move around so we can get some light out here what's in your hand moses that means it's a skill a talent or something that you do so well better than anybody else and that is your rod and you're going to use that to stretch it out over the ocean so that it will move and open up doors for you so you can get across the ocean you understand what i'm saying did i help you today did that help you today fantastic now my name is andrew e guy i'm starting my coaching program and i need you to get over to the andrew guy speaks.com pick up a copy of work your words there's another amazing book that i need you to go pick up too it's called the anatomy of the kingdom and the power of community there's a new version coming out to the anatomy of the kingdom called the power of community unleashing the kingdom in your life that's what it's called 
unleashing the kingdom in your life the book is coming man we have so many great things that are coming right now but i want to help you to understand get out there get these things that are coming to you andrew guy speaks at calm like this video share this video place a comment in there and send it to some people that you love i'm also the host of the isla podcast i'm listening i'm ready i'm telling you it is a podcast that's dedicated for those who are on the go whether you're traveling by land here or sea you gotta check this out go to ilarpodcast.com i-l-i-r podcast.com and listen follow me out there on youtube that is andrew guy speaks we're looking for more subscribers if you're following me here on instagram i need all of you to go over to youtube and look up listen to me now and look up youtube.com at isla podcast and just subscribe just go ahead and all 500 of you go over there right now and just follow me follow me because i have some great things and some great people that are coming up and i'm out here right now it's still dark and i refuse to go inside until i finish this message I hope you can hear me. So I want you to understand. I want you to win where you are. I don't just want you to win. I want you to create your greatest impact where you live, where you work, and where you play. That's it for now. Until we meet again, this is Andrew saying, listen, man, you got to be resilient. It's the only thing that's going to make the difference in your life. Peace. And now I'm going to type in here, I had fun. Lots of fun. Put fun here. Boom. Post. And I'm going to say share this message with 100 people. Boom. Hey, that's my time. I'll see you later. Take care. Peace. All right. How do we end these things? See, I don't do much live. Eh? All right. So we click on this. Are you sure you want to end your video? Yes, I want to end my.